Well, here we go. This is uh, <laughs> cut, edit, start over. Professor Jeremiah. <laughs> it's been too long since I've done this. Did you put your makeup on? I didn't. Uh, and I like this song too much for we'll be talking over it. It's going to be very difficult to continue this video and listen to this song at the same time. Because I like this song so much. I do too. I'm distracted. If you had your banker here, you could play along. I could. But maybe the YouTube audience will enjoy listening to the song along with us. Yeah, and then we get in trouble and it'll be banned. Because you have to talk over the song most of the time. These will make some great outtakes. So if you watch this video to the end, you'll have a lot of entertainment, maybe. We'll see. We'll think it's entertaining. Yeah, you know. it's entertaining to me. This is what happens when you have, you know, the radio playing as your background music. Oh, I'm going to be out of tobacco again. So. Okay, here we go. Hello, brothers and sisters of the Briar. Professor Jeremiah here. This is Jeff, my co-worker from Nigeria, and we are not in Nigeria, are we? We are not in Nigeria. No, we are definitely not in Nigeria. Well, due to a security issue, which we won't get into here, uh, Jeff had to come back to the States, and it's also delayed my return. We do have our vehicle, and uh, right now we're enjoying it here. Thank the Lord we did not ship that vehicle already to Nigeria. Or we not only wouldn't have a vehicle to be driving here, but we would be in uh, big problems uh, if that was sitting at the port uh, in West Africa. So my return was very unexpected, but it was nice to see the vehicle. I just heard rumors about it, but to actually be able to ride in it was very nice. And drive it this morning. You got I did to drive, drive it some. this morning. He let me drive. Sometimes he lets me out. He even lets me drive the car. I've been kind of stingy driving it myself. Well, uh, today I'm smoking. This is kind of a new pipe to me. Uh, I've had it, I guess I say new. I've had it about four months, uh, maybe even a little longer than that. It came from the Chicago Pipe Show. And uh, you can see this is, uh, I think it is, what did I say earlier? T... P-E, T-P-E, I guess it's the initials of the maker. Handmade, one thing you will see is the finish uh, kind of faded a little bit as it's heated up. And that's why you see this top part shiny and here's a little dull. Uh, and in it, I'm uh, smoking some Sutliff Irish coffee. I bought it in bulk, so I think that may be the only way that Sutliff sells it. But you can see it in my jar. These are some great new jars I got just the other day. Now, I do cheat a little bit on this Irish coffee. And if you look close in the bottom, you'll see the whiskey barrel staves out of Frogmorton Cellar. And I had a tin of this, which I set up uh, the last time that I was here in the States. And when I opened it up, it was just incredible. I made, really made it over the top. And here's my own label, which I made for it. But you can see Irish coffee and put a little description in. And uh, I do believe that's an Irishman smoking his pipe in the picture. Well, tell us a little bit about your pipe and what you're smoking here. Well, today I'm smoking my GBD Celebrity, and I really like this design. This is uh, the, the style that I prefer, straight stem, more of the Canadian, and as you can see, it has a extra big bowl here so I can pack a lot of tobacco and uh, get quite a long smoke out of it. But in this, I don't know if you can see this here, this is the label for what I'm smoking. This is the McClellan Bombay Extra. Not McClellan's label. That's my own label for Bombay Extra. This is McClellan's label. So if you start looking for it. Now tell us a little bit how you came about this tobacco. This is a new tobacco for me, but it's, it's a neat story because where we live in Nigeria, of course it's a very remote area, and so we don't have cell service. Very rarely are able to get on the internet, obviously, unless we go somewhere we can find a connection. If we go to the city, which is only about once a month, sometimes once every six weeks. So anyhow, because of that, I don't do much social networking. But one site that I really do enjoy is called Goodreads. And if you're not familiar with that, it's uh, basically a, a networking site where people that like to read, 
books come together and talk about the books that they're reading. And so uh, at one point when I was around the internet and I could actually use it, I was reading some reviews of a book I'd read and I came across one that I really enjoyed and I said, hey, let me check this guy's profile out. Well, when I went to his picture, I noticed that he was a pipe smoker. And as the YouTube audience knows, us pipe smokers, we have to stick together. And so I sent him a friend request and uh, told him I enjoyed his review and told him I too was a pipe smoker. And he said, hey, that's great. He had spent some time overseas as well. He had been in New Zealand and uh, friends of his had sent him some tobacco when he was there because it was hard for him to get certain blends that he enjoyed. So he said, I'll send you some tobacco. And this was the tobacco that he sent to me. And I must say that I, uh, I've really enjoyed it. It's uh, dark in Virginia and it has some Latakia, but it also has a touch of Perique in it, which I really enjoy. Perique is probably one of my uh, uh, more favorite flavors. And so the Perique in this kind of brings out all the other flavors and it's fast becoming one of my favorite tobaccos. I smoked a little bit of it and I will say it didn't have, uh, which sometimes when I've tried other Perique blends, uh, it's kind of a nicotine bomb almost in some of them, but this one seemed to be kind of mild and uh, didn't really, didn't make you queasy or feel like you were going to uh, have a splitting headache afterwards. So I, I enjoyed it. I guess you, I mean, you don't feel much nicotine with it, do you? No, this blend has never bothered me. It's got a nice, mild taste to it. But as I say, uh, plenty in there to, to keep your taste buds interested in the flavor. Uh, on this pipe, one thing that I had noticed when I first got it, I, I asked my tobacconist, he had uh, purchased it, I wasn't in Chicago, but he had purchased it, and I said, well, what kind of material is this here? And he's like, oh, I don't know, and when I got home, and I'm kind of curious uh, if that's what it is, if uh, anybody knows the maker, as I said, it's uh, TPE, but uh, I'm pretty sure this is a piece of ivory. Now, of course, many a animals have ivory, so it's not necessarily from an elephant, or it could be reclaimed from something else. But uh, I put it up against a piece of ivory, which I have that I know is ivory, uh, mm -hmm. an old bracelet uh, that I have that's from uh, Africa, and, and it had the same hatch pattern. So uh, all I can say is if it's, uh, if it's an artificial material, then somehow they came up with the same hatch pattern uh, that's on ivory, but we'll see. I'm kind of curious if this is a local maker uh, somewhere you know, in the area, we might see him because uh, at the end of this month, at the end of September, we're going to be at the Nashville Pipe Show. The Nashville Pipe Show. Hope to see you there. Uh, as soon as we found out that we both were going to be in the States at the same time and uh, a pipe show close to where we are, we're in Birmingham, Alabama right now, and it's put on by the Southern Fried Pipe Club, we are on our way. We are booked. We have our tickets. And we're going to be there. And we hope to see you there, too. So if you see us, start looking for Professor Jeremiah or Jeff. Jeff also has some books, which he's authored. And we'll probably talk about those in another video here soon. Uh, partly, I would like to talk about it. And I plan on already having shot a video talking about his books. But how much better to have the author of those books here. Uh, one of the things that Jeff's been able to do is kind of work in, in some of his novels, some pipe smokers. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, as well, and uh, maybe some of you will be interested in the books. They're a little post-apocalyptic, uh, so it might be of interest uh, to some of you out there. And what do you do in the post-apocalyptic world when you're a pipe smoker? Maybe uh, we'll get a little insight into how that future is going to turn out. But uh, anyway, brothers and sisters, I hope you have a good uh, week, especially a good Memorial Day. It would be Labor Day. Labor Day. I'm sorry. I keep saying Memorial Day. And Have my, a good Labor Day. Have my, a good Memorial Day, too. <laughs> my mother corrected me yesterday because I said Memorial Day then, too, and she corrected me, and I said, oh, they're all the same, and then she said, not when your father worked for Pullman Standard, and my grandfather worked for Pullman Standard uh, making boxcars, and so uh, definitely... Uh, for, for her, she knew the difference between the memorial and labor, and Labor uh, Day really stood out there. So 
That's just, uh, I don't know, as a child, for some reason, maybe I had an evil teacher at school and mixed them up, and I always get it mixed up. She was trying to confuse you. She probably said. So. I'm pretty sure, because it worked, because I used to mix up orange and yellow all the time. So. Memorial Day, Labor Day. <laughs> happy Labor Day, YouTubers. <laughs> so happy Labor Day to you out there who are hardworking people. We're hardworking, too, just different kind of work. I'm not building boxcars. And uh, anyway, brothers and sisters, hope you have a... Good weekend, uh, good Labor Day, and God bless. God bless.